welcome back to the realm one popular opinions today it is time for the salty video the supreme which is the worst book that i read this year not necessarily made this year or of all time but just the worst worst pieces of literature that i read this year again obviously this is subjective but i know some people have beef with this kind of video so i mean i guess i guess that's a personal problem i love this type of video because it is very helpful to me to know why something ticked off someone about a book so much that they would actually put it on a list that's the worst books of a particular year. So if you're like me, I hope you enjoy. I'll try not to roast it too much, but I will let you know what actually caused me to put the book here. In any case, I hope that's a little bit helpful and let's get into the video. I will talk about both of these at once, but try and separate them so it's more concise. I think number one will have to be the Bungo Stray Dogs Light Novel 6, which I understand is a favorite amongst fans, but I couldn't stand it. I just felt it was purposefully intended to hurt personally me. I knew what it was about. I knew kind of what happened before I read it. And I knew that I shouldn't read it because I knew it would hit me particularly hard because Dazai and Oda are my favorite Bungo Stray Dog characters, I knew it would just not be good for me. <laughs> I didn't know I would hate it that much though, because I felt like it was just a personal insult without getting into too much details. You can go to my Goodreads, I think I articulated it better there, but I'm not 100% not sure. I know that this felt like it was personally insulting me and I cried about it like in the middle of the night and I talked to my friend and I told her how I was so upset that in an alternate universe, in an alternate universe, I am still targeted. I don't really know how to talk about this without getting into spoilers, but if you know what happens in it and you know that... Dazai and Oda are my absolute everything, I think you will understand why this upset me. And I felt like it was extremely unnecessary. It felt like very painful fan fiction. <laughs> like it was unnecessarily hurtful is all I have really to say about this. And I'm not a masochist. I'm not someone who likes just pointless pain. So I don't need to say anything else about this one, I think. Next one, as I already said, is going to be similar. It's just Boo Boo Stray Dogs. Let's be generous and say volumes like 19 plus. <laughs> I think everything before that is also bad. But this is where it just went to hell. It stopped making sense. If you've been reading it and you're enjoying what's going on right now, I am just going to assume you don't have any critical thinking. Which might be good because I'm the one who has to get pissed off every single month. But I think this is where it all went downhill. And now I just feel like he's been, he has been dragging it out for years. Because he doesn't want to finish it. Because he doesn't know how to finish it. And just for reference, how season 3 ended, I think it would have been perfectly fine to cut it off there. And I'm a little bit upset that they're making season 4. Because now I'm going to have to acknowledge all the shit that I read. Will I watch it? Of course I will. Do I think it needed to be made? No, it didn't. This should have ended ages ago and Dasagiri should have just dealt with more novels or actually, God forbid, another story because this one should have been done ages ago and I am doing my best to avoid spoilers. But if you're interested in the details of why I hated it so much, you can just text me on, I don't know, Instagram or in the comments or something but absolutely atrocious should have ended ages ago at this point it's just him milking it for the money and i kind of actually feel sorry for the people who are falling for it because inevitably when it finally ends and i am rid of my suffering i hope you're not as disappointed as i was all along i'm not holding up any of these books because a lot of them i don't own or i don't own anymore which is why I'm doing it like this, but Uprooted. I already have a rant where I just diss on this book with Amy from Booktube with Amy. 
and it's a freaking awful book. <laughs> Not the worst ever, but I feel like sometimes it's a worse sin to have a boring not at all cohesive book than to have a very emotionally upsetting book because that still means that you managed to get me to care she didn't even manage to do that <laughs> i just didn't care about anything that was occurring everything was flimsy the plot was flimsy the motivations were non-existent at times things just happened for the hell of it and i think this kind of suffered from the fact that it was a standalone the concept of the wood would have been interesting to explore but she said no this is the standalone I don't want to deal with it anymore and you can tell you can absolutely tell that she just had enough but again not everything has to be published that is my firm belief and if it is published it shouldn't be popular because that just makes me spend my money for absolutely nothing this was awful this was just awful I will still be reading uh spinning silver because i kind of have more hope for that one but this was just atrocious i would recommend it to no one and i was actually disappointed with how cool the cool concepts were because i would have just preferred if nothing was at all interesting about this so i don't feel like i could have gotten a better book and in conclusion i've talked about this enough just don't read it and do yourself a favor this is very hard to do without spoilers, but yeah, go see the rant if you feel like getting our our more chaotic thoughts. Next up, we have the delightful book, which is Anne's House of Dreams. Now, keep in mind that I didn't even read the book that comes between the third book and this one, but Anne's House of Dreams, I think, disappointed me because she had a wonder wonderful groundwork for making Anne not someone that Lucy herself was. Because this, as soon as she turns into the bitter housewife that hates her husband, but has children so she kind of can't leave, her books took a nosedive into garbage territory. I read that the following ones are even worse, but this one was already already depressing it's I think very disappointing because she doesn't lose her style there's still descriptions of the sea of nature of animals of beautiful things in her own magical whimsy but <laughs> it's all kind of woven into the story that Anne essentially loses who she was and becomes exactly who everyone else expects her to be and as wonderful as her and Gilbert's relationship is, this isn't even the focus of that. They have like maybe three conversations actually between themselves. More of the book is spent on Anne getting to know her neighbors, matchmaking and having kids, which is definitely not something we were interested in when we fell in love with the original Anne, Shirley Cuthbert. So this was just a disappointment because she doesn't lose her style, she just loses her own magic. And I wish she didn't. Like, it wasn't necessary to keep writing a fictional, beautiful world you created and just dip it in the terrible, terrible life that you had at the time. It's similar to Ursula Le Guin and why I hated Tehanu. It's because they returned to a story after a time and they had a certain issue in their lives that they that really shaped them but you don't have to put it into your worlds that's the only beauty of them you don't have to have them reflect your own mood because we didn't fall in love with this kind of L.M. Montgomery we didn't fall in love with the boring housewife who literally has nothing in her life to do until she has children but snoop on other people, gossip, and marry off her friends and look forward to their love lives is all I'm saying. It was just such a disappointment because Anne becomes exactly who everyone else is and it's, even though it wasn't that painful to read, it is painful to see <laughs> how much hope just left the entire series because the whole beauty of Anne was that she wasn't like everyone else and the fact that she had to grow up and become literally the standard housewife is just very, very sad to have to read about.
This is just a short mention, but it's, the, I think it was the Call of Cthulhu. I'm not even sure what the story is called. I just, I wanted to give Lovecraft one go. And I think this is the last go that I will be giving him because he just gave me, as I said in my wrap up, I will not repeat myself too much. He gave me vibes of a college professor that's just writing down things he's thinking about but in a very boring way. I know this is supposed to be horror but it's not even that. It's just boring and bleak and a little bit pointless to be fair because you have this ancient being and he's just equating it with the devil. <laughs> it's essentially like one day Satan will rise in the shape of a tentacle man and we're doomed I guess. I. I'm not sure how to articulate this one because I just hated the way it was written and it wasn't even that long. But it's just not even scary, not even spooky, thrillery. It's just like someone wrote a very boring scientific paper about their supernatural thoughts. And I mean, I'm not sure if he was religious or not, but if you're scared of Satan that much, I don't know, go to church. I mean, if that's your thing, you don't have to write a book about it. But again, you do you. I know a lot of people love Lovecraft, but I was just not at all, at all into it. This is the first and last time I will be dipping my toes into the Lovecraftian waters. I'm sure this one's gonna hurt even more, but Cersei. I don't wanna rant about it again. I think there's like a five minute chunk of my wrap up dedicated just to Cersei. But I wanted to love this book. You have no idea how much I wanted to love this book because I love lyrical, lyrical writing which I heard that she has and I love Greek mythology I wanted to love it really bad I think that's why I was so upset and just gave it a one star I usually give one stars when I'm severely upset <laughs> and bad books just get like two stars this got a one because I was just so angry I did not enjoy how there was no plot there was absolutely no plot I know it's a retelling of like a real myth or whatever but I'm sure if you're making an adaptation, you can make it more fun. Otherwise, I can just read the Greek myth. There's absolutely no need for this. And the only thing that she added is unnecessary sexism, which I am never into reading. If again, if you want to know more thoughts, just check out the wrap up. I don't want to go on about this anymore, but this upset me because I wanted to love it. I won't deny that it wasn't, that it was beautifully written because it was. She can write technically, but she cannot make up stuff, at least in this book. I'm not sure if I will ever give anything else a try, but I think this is her newest, right? I think Song of Achilles is older and this is actually newer. But in any case, I'm not sure. I was just very upset with this. And I'm never interested in rape plot lines just to drive forward some development. And it wasn't even development. So I'm sure there are plenty complaints about that if someone's complaining. But otherwise, I feel like everyone's praising this like it has exactly zero flaws. And that is beyond knowing as someone who was in the minority. So again, check out the wrap up, check out the good reads. You will know everything you need to know, but I absolutely hated my time reading this. I wanted to throw it out the window, like in that scene in Silver Linings, at least four times. We'll wrap it up with one final little chunk, which is The Duelists by Bram Stoker. <sighs> this was just disgusting. I don't have a lot to say about it. It's just disgusting. The Penny Dreadfuls are supposed to be spooky, scary spooky scary skeletons spooky scary books that people just read every week in the newspapers not disgust me to my core trigger warnings for literally anything imaginable child murder animal cruelty galore just don't read it i have nothing else to say just don't read it and do yourself that favor that i didn't do myself because it was awful Bram Stoker, I don't know what you were thinking, but some things just need to be kept in the personal diary and not given to publishers, <laughs> is all that I have to say about this one. Literally trigger warnings for everything. Every page of this was full of stuff that I didn't want to read about, didn't want to imagine, didn't want to know. Just absolutely not.
that wraps up this very, very salty video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you had fun. It's very hard to do this without delving into spoiler territory, so I'm sorry. But if you're interested, I always have my Goodreads linked so you can check out my thoughts. Or you could just go and watch the wrap ups. I think they're always more in detail, even though they're not really spoilery. And let me know what your least favorite books you read this year were because if it's some of my favorites, I think it'd be kind of interesting to see. But anyway, this was fun. Not as long as the favorites video, which is very good because this year my rating for the year was like 4.5 stars, which is really good because it was a very good reading year, but there's always going to be some duds. I tried to pick out books that were two or one stars, three stars aren't bad books, although I personally probably didn't like them as much more than their three stars, but that's probably just because they were boring or not my thing, so I wouldn't really call them the worst books of the year, just not my vibe. But anyway, <laughs> all of that is on Goodreads. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next video.